100k is nothing. You get stacked all the time in heads up. I went through a stretch where I didn't stack him for 2k hands. I've never heard of anything like that in my entire life. 2k hands, no stackings. That's not even a fucking thing. And then I have to go on and listen to the ground like, I'm running so bad! I'm running so bad! I'm running so bad! And the GG Poker commentators are like, they are there, Negronu. Yes, you have been running bad. You've been running bad, Mr. Negronu. We're so sorry about it. I mean, come on. You're in the mix. I respect that. You've done a bunch of stuff better. But this whole, we're going to just bitch about luck every session, it sounds like you're a one-two fish when you do this. This is what fishes do at one-two. They talk about bad beats. Imagine you're battling someone at 1 to 200, a heads up rag, back and forth, he loses 10 binds and says, I just can't believe how lucky you are. Y you would show that to your friends. But can you believe this guy? This is embarrassing. And then I win, I win 1.8 buy-ins today. <laughs> 1.8, not even two buy-ins. And I'm the luckiest man that's ever lived. It's not even two buy-ins. I won not even two buy-ins today. Should we run through some hands? Yeah, fire through it. We, we are just, as you're running through those hands, I'm going to be gathering reports from the chat on Dneg's interview, which is happening right now, which is apparently okay. quite feisty. Feisty. So, uh, I'll get some info. You are apparently the luckiest player ever. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. besides that, let's put that aside. I'm going to try to see if well, we let me Well, let me tell you about the biggest pot ever. The biggest pot of the session, sorry. I open pocket threes. He three bets I call. Ace and Ace 10, we're one and a half binds deep. He bets, I call, and me, being the luckiest player of all time, hit a three on the turn. Bone on the turn, how lucky is that? There's only Locked two three. threes, two threes in the deck, Mike. Two threes in the deck, and I hit one. So fucking lucky. Unbelievable, it's, it's unbelievable how lucky that is. What's the chance of a boat in the turn there? Anyway, he bets, I call, river is a deuce. He bets again, and he hasn't taken this line off in this challenge, so I felt a little scary, but I have a boat, and I go all in with my luck box boat, and he has ace 10 for the nuts, the top boat. But I think the real thing we can take away here is we need a YouTube video on how goddamn good Doug is at hitting boats. That's really I mean, the most hit, important thing here. You, you hit a two outer, two. Sick. On the so turn. sick. You, need, you needed a three on the turn, and there's only two of those, and yet it came. So Unbelievable. Lucky. So lucky. Uh, anyway, then we had Ace King all in pre against Jax, and I hit an Ace. Such lucky stuff, you know, unbelievable. I also got Ace King all in against Tens and didn't didn't get there. But but I think we need to focus more on the one that I did. And it's not that fair that I had Ace King against Jax, and a King and an Ace came. It's fucked up. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that fucked on, up? Especially because it was on the turn. It's just like that's even that's sicker. Still, yeah, there's, even only, sicker. there's only one card on the turn. Did you know that, Mike? There's three on the flop, one on the turn. What's the chance? And by the way, I'm seeing a pattern here, Mike. Three on the turn, ace on the turn. I seem to get really lucky on the turn. That's that's where I'm I'm, I'm sensing good vibes uh, on the turn. So you're positing that you're a turn luck box. <laughs> yeah, and then the other one, the ace king versus tens, you know, he held, but he got in ahead. So that's just standard. And then this is some classic luck box shit. Ace king versus jackson, ace comes, unbelievable. Anyway. We have uh, a hand where I open queen nine. We're very deep in this hand. We are two and a half binds deep. I open queen nine. He three bets, I call. Queen four deuce, two spades. He bets two thirds pot on the flop. I call. The turn's an eight, he checks. I bet one third pot on the turn. Small bet. He check raises big. It's like 36K or something like that, right? 34K, yeah. I. I'm starting to feel scared, but on the other hand, also have top pair, I call. The river is a 10. And it's the kind of spot where if he does jam, I think I'm probably going to get stacked with the queen nine. And I'm praying, please, please don't stack me with the, with the whatever. <laughs> and he checks. And I check back and he has ace king of spades. And again, how lucky is that? You know, he could have hit a spade and he didn't. He could have hit a flush or an ace or a king. It's just, this is just vintage. I mean, this is this is three lucky hands now. Four, kind of. 
You know, these are these are just four lucky hands in a row. When yeah. will it end? When will it end? Then we have a hand. I open Ace Nine. He three bets Ace Five suited. Ace Seven Two. All right. So I'm ahead for now, but I'm sure I'll get lucky somewhere. He bets small on the flop. I call turn four. Another lucky turn for me. I'm still ahead. I'm he disgusted by how lucky you've been getting. It's unbelievable. Turn, <laughs> I bet two thirds when checked two. He calls. So 29K in the pot, 26K behind. And I get the lucky three on the river that gives him a straight. But the reason it's lucky is now I get to play a big pot. How lucky is that? Pretty lucky. I jam top pair, like with a luck box I am. And he calls with a straight and wins 40K. Another lucky hand. I think, I think frankly, it's just disgusting how lucky I got in this hand. Sick. It's just sick. The next hand, I open pocket sixes. He three bets tens. Eight, seven, six. Very lucky flop. It, 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 this is nine lucky hands now, I think. He checks. I bet very small. He check raises massive, which yeah, I'm sure actually, is. I know you're <laughs> going through it quickly, but we actually were wondering about that. What do you think of his check raise here for that size? Well, I, I think it's very unlikely it's balanced. That's what we said. And I think it's very likely that he has a value bet and is trying to stag me. <clears throat> it's hard to stack sixes, though. He likes to have a flop raise strategy in three-bet pots of big for value and small polar, mainly bluffy. Because the thing is, when you raise small, you risk less to win the same amount. This is advanced poker tips. Pro <laughs> probably in the Negranu Masterclass. I'm Danny Negranu, and fuck you, fuck you, fuck you in your ass. Anyway, I jam, he calls pocket tens, disgusting. And of course, the luck box that I fucking am hold with my set, unbelievable. Another lucky hand, just put that down. Eight or nine of them at this point. Oh, this, this hand is disgusting how lucky it is. Are you ready? This is the luckiest hand of the session. He opens, queen six suited. I threw my ace queen suited. Already so fucking filthy how lucky that is. Can you imagine having the higher kicker? Disgusting. Anyway, Never he calls, happened. has to call. Jack 5 3, flush draw. A disgustingly lucky flop. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. At this point, he's got the backdoor flush draw. It's a cooler setup. He does call. Queen on the turn. Boom! Lucky turn once again! Flush gets in, even luckier. Neither one of us has a spade. His, his fate is sealed. I bet small, he calls. River is an eight. And I decide to slow down here with the queen and check it over to him. His hand plays itself. What's he supposed to do? Check back with a queen here? Of course not. You have to jam and get value from, I'm not sure. Maybe <laughs> ace jack. That but answers maybe, our question. But, but maybe ace jack, you know? It's just, it's just disgusting. That's just the, it's, it's just an unbelievably lucky. Hand. What's the chance of a flush hitting and neither player having it? Unbelievable. It's That's just crazy. so fucking lucky. Yeah. He has no choice. He's going to have to get stacked there. There's nothing he can do. In all huh. seriousness, just to take a break from this amazing stuff, do, <laughs> do you think, do, do you check back in Daniel's shoes there with the queen six of clubs, turn top pair? Well, turn he called. Yeah, river. He played yeah, it fine. He checks. Oh, so you do jam river as, as Daniel? No, you like no, no, of course not. Of course not. It's obviously okay. a check. Yeah. Oh, it's a check. Obviously okay. A check. I was yeah. wondering if it could maybe... It just didn't no. make sense. It's just maybe, really... Maybe smaller size, but eh. And no, it's just it's just a check. Yeah, it makes sense. It's it, Especially if you know how lucky I am, right? Oh. Because then then you know... You have to factor that in. You have to factor yeah. how lucky. It's been it's been unbelievable just, just how lucky that one is. And then... Oh my God, this hand was disgusting. You want to hear another disgusting hand? I threw bet eight. I, I, did I play it? <laughs> queen four three. I threw bet he calls. Queen four three. I have eight seven. He has ten six. This is another cooler setup I've ever seen one in my life. I bet small. He calls. Just sick. Turn seven. Second <laughs> pair. Obviously another turn for Doug. As we've seen all of these turns, another one for Doug. I check. He bluffs. I call. River, deuce, the perfect card. I check, he bets two thirds pot, I call, and he has the 10-6 for 10 high. Another lucky hand. You, you can't, you oh, let me tell you some more lucky hands. This one might have been the luckiest one of the night. He opens, I call jack six of spades. 
a lucky ass hand if I've ever seen one. <clears throat> Queen 10 9, two spades. What a flop. I check. He bets small, I call. Turns an eight, creating two flush draws. I have a flush and a straight. The luckiest turn once again. We're just so good at these turns. I check. He bets half pot. I decide to check raise him. Pretty solid size. Pretty solid size check raise here on the turn. He makes the call. River Jack. So the board's straight. Backdoor flush gets there. I pot it, trying to get him off chops. And he calls. What a lucky river for me. He had ace king. Ace king off. I win on every river other than that lucky jack. The only river I would lose on is the lucky jack that I hit once again. And I lose a 50k pot. I mean, what, what's the chance of that in the river? Do you realize how lucky that river is for me? Very. Unbelievable. What's the <laughs> chance of that river? What's the chance of the jack on the river there? And it wasn't, even, it wasn't even off suit. He couldn't even jam for value. Sick. Fucking disgusting. Disgusting. It's it, it's hard to watch these, Mike. It's hard to watch looking back and realizing how lucky that I am. You're telling me. You're telling oh my. me. Oh I've my. Watched, oh. I've watched every hand. Oh. I've been sickened sick watching oh. how lucky. Oh, and let me tell you another lucky hand that I just I another classic Doug hand. I threw about the aces, and he calls because I'm just so lucky. Ten nine six two spades, a lucky flop for aces if I've ever seen one. I check. He bets small. I call. Turn three. Again, Mike, lucky turn. Check, he checks back, river eight, check. He bets the pot, I call. Queen five of spades, missed flush draw. How lucky is that? No flush for him, sick. He never bluffs and yet you caught him bluffing. That's very lucky. Also, he didn't hit a flush against aces. What's the chance of that? Could someone put that in your calculator? What's the chance of not hitting a flush against aces? Cause that has to be one in a million. <laughs> I don't know how there's there's just so many other lucky hands. It's, it, it's just hard to really go through all of them, but yeah, it's just a lot of a lot of lucky a lot of lucky lucky hands for me today. You know, I'm just thankful. I'm just thanking my lucky stars to get to be we, uh, this, the, this the lucky. The chat, the chat apparently uh, via Dnegs is letting us know what he had, what Dnegs had in that hand where you bet 100k into what was it 50 or. 55k on the river after check raising big on the turn uh he had queen jack of clubs so he had a turned flush river was a four flush i believe ace of clubs right and then that's so, when you jam jam so, for 100k so lucky so lucky it would be so ironic I, you know not, I, I, not that you would reveal this but it would be so ironic if you had a boat there and that fourth club on the river cost you this the the big sacking that you would have had that would just be so good. But, I, but it's, it, it would still be lucky, because how lucky is it to hit a boat? That's true. That's true. You I have to think know. of that, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. You have to remember, it was lucky either way, Mike. It was just lucky. My mistake. I, can I, I'm going to be honest here. I, I'm going to have to throw the luck thing to the side, because apparently all we're going to talk about this whole challenge is, is luck. Can I be honest here? I think Daniel, I've played a lot of heads up in my life. I think that he has run... One of the hottest of any opponent I've ever played in my entire life. One of the <laughs> hottest. I, I don't even think it's remotely close. I've had kings versus aces three times this challenge. I get stacked all over the place everywhere. I'm always I'm always in a shit spot. Most of the big pots I win are me making it like uh, like a small like a hero call that's really tough, or it's a bluff I get through. Tons of those, or it's me just just bobbing and weaving. And then I have a good hand. Boom, boat over boat. The amount of luck Negranu has had this challenge is so funny that his perception is completely warped. In his mind, the reason that he's getting unlucky is because when he loses, it feels unlucky. But that's because I have the edge. He has run unbelievably hot this challenge. Unbelievably hot. I bet you if we put it on non-showdown, I bet you I've won one to $1.5 million in non-showdown this challenge. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm up 30 or 40 buy-ins in non-showdown. And yet, in the big pots, and obviously part of non showing is I will be more likely to lose the big pots. He's just turbo stomping me. And then he gets aces in versus kings. I had a king. He talks about his all in EV. Bro, that pot is going the same way either way. It doesn't matter. You know? And I'm, that's not the takeaway from the improvements that he's made. But to only be down what he's down now, to have his all in EV be what it is, 
He's been impossibly lucky. He's probably in his top 10% of runs right now. He just doesn't even realize it. If I was going through his run, he would be decimated. Just absolutely decimated. There would be nothing left. It's just so silly. I've not played any heads up players where it's been this brutal for this many hands. I just not. I, I just don't have value bets against him. I just bluff this guy and get him to fold, and then and then I get stacked when I have a hand. It just happens over and over again. It's unbelievable. And this whole narrative, frankly, is fucking stupid. Let's talk about luck again today. He got so lucky. He got so lucky. I even made a flush. Look at all these flushes. There's a video of all these flushes he made. It was one. It was one flush. It was so lucky. Ah. Ah. Man. This is 200, okay? 100k is nothing. You get stacked all the time in heads up. I went through a stretch where I didn't stack him for 2k hands. I've never heard of anything like that in my entire life. 2k hands, no stackings. That's not even a fucking thing. And then I have to go on and listen to Grumpy. I'm running so bad! I'm running so bad! I'm running so bad! <laughs> And the GG Poker commentators are like, they are there, Negranu. Yes, you have been running bad. You've been running bad, Mr. Negranu. We're so sorry about it. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. What the fuck is this narrative? I mean, come on. You're in the mix. I respect that. You've done a bunch of stuff better. I respect that. He's getting better every day. But this whole, we're going to just bitch about luck every session... It sounds like you're a one-two fish when you do this. This is what fishes do at one-two. They talk about bad beats. How long are we going to do this for? I'm up 700k or whatever now. And do you think that that's a coincidence? You think it's a coincidence you got, quote, really unlucky for all of these hands? Did you think this was a flip? Did you think nice. this was even money? Anyone can win, it's heads up, cards come out. Oh no, lucky cards for Jack! Ah! Like, what the fuck is this? Honestly, it's so I, dumb. If it, I, honestly, if anyone, if any, if any actual like heads up reg did that shit versus me, I would tell them to grow up. If any, imagine you're battling someone at one or 200, a heads up reg back and forth. He loses 10 binds and says, I just can't believe how lucky you are. Y you would show that to your friends. But can you believe this guy? This is embarrassing. Can you embarrassing? Imagine losing ten buy-ins. And then I win I win 1.8 buy-ins today. 1.8! Not even two buy-ins! And I'm the luckiest man that's ever lived! I don't understand. It's not even two buy-ins! I won not even two buy-ins today! I won 1.8 buy-ins! Oh my god! I just can't take the pain anymore! I just can't take the pain! Oh, uh, I tried to be so nice about this! And, and, and I have plenty of actually really good things to say. I've tried to just ignore the luck conversation because I don't want to get into it and, and say things like this because I do have a lot of good things to say about Negranu now. I do. But man, can we just, can we just stop with this shit? It's pathetic at this point. Well, whoever just said in chat, and like whoever put in chat, Daniel said Doug is the luckiest player ever that session. It was like you took a grenade, you pulled the pin out, you dropped it in Doug's studio there, and then it went off. That was a good- 1.8 buy-ins! <laughs> 1.8! I didn't even win two buy-ins! I won 1.8! You know, if I had won three buy-ins, I might as well call up the, the California Lottery and ask for my money. <laughs> I mean, that's not even possible from what I've heard. I got boat overboated for the biggest pot this session. Boat overboated. <laughs> I got boat overboated and I'm the luckiest guy! Lucky turn, lucky dog! Hits the three on the turn. Oh my lord! Good times in the in the heads up streets. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's sorry. Been a long what, what, time since, it's been a what, long time since you streamed, so I, I, I bet it felt good to get that kind of thing out, did it?
Eh. What are the what are, what are the lucky ass hands that we have today? Oh, <laughs> so lucky. Oh, this hand was disgusting. You want to hear a lucky hand? So lucky. Yep. You know it. We open queen ten. He three bets. I call. Already lucky. You can just feel it in the air. Jack nine five <laughs> with a flush draw. He bets forty percent. I call. Turn jack. A lucky turn. Pairs the jack. I have the straight draw. Queen and a ten, both very close to a jack. Super lucky. He bets two thirds. I call. River, deuce. Luckiest river in the deck. He jams. He checks. I jam and he folds. So lucky. That's that luck has been there all challenge. It's constantly been there. Disgustingly lucky. What's the chance of that river? And then his folding. Did you know? Did you know there's only one deuce of spades in the deck? What's the chance of that coming on the river? It's got to be one in a million. It's got to be one in a million. There's no other. There's no other. Okay. It's a 50-50. Either you get there or you don't. And I got there. Deuce of spades. Any All right. more hands? Should we drop? Oh. <laughs> Man, that was that was a ride. Let me tell you. This session was a ride. This yeah. session was a ride, but that was a ride. To, like, arguably more of a ride. Ryan, what do you think? Do you think the session was more of a ride or what we just went through with Doug? That was, that was somehow spicier than the 65k checkers. <laughs> Tough to do. <sighs> do do we want to talk about hands? I, I I feel apathetic on that front. I feel we we've talked about enough hands. Yeah, that was quite get, a bit of hands. Okay, that was right too, we too, right too many. So Cliff notes. Every hand was lucky. There were turns that came out, and those were obviously lucky because they were turns, and I was in the hand. And then a lot of lucky rivers as well. Just the kind of stuff you'd expect from Dougie P. All right, so now we got our rapid fire questions that we're ready for that aren't usually so rapid. Here's the first one. I was pretty interesting if you get interested if you get this one right. What has has been the biggest stack of the challenge? This is more of a quiz question than like a hmm. an interview question. What has been the biggest stack of the challenge and who had it? I think I had a 300k stack once. Awesome. Oh, no. You don't even oh. What was it was it more was it more than that? Three 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 forty? 340, three forty, I think. All right, so to whoever said Doug has been bragging about having the only 400k stack, you were wrong. He didn't even know he had the only 400k stack, so <laughs> knew it. I, I was 100% sure you would not even have been aware of who had the biggest stack. That would be a really weird brag. <laughs> Yo, I had such a big stack that one day. <laughs> I won over 1.8 buy-ins. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh, All right. Man. Next one, this person, you won't believe, this person has probably asked this question in chat and on Twitter 40 plus times. You will not believe that fact based on what the question is, but I just have to give it to them based on their sort of dedication to getting the answer. Okay. What is your, this is from Marlo on Twitter. What is your favorite kind of jam for toast? <laughs> it's really important to me, please. I don't <laughs> like jam. Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't like jam. I don't like fruit. Mm -mm. Doesn't doesn't like fruit. Mm -mm. All right, that's a weird take. I hope that uh, was worth the forty questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They don't even they don't even get an answer. They were asking because it was the only. Jam I also don't eat toast. I don't eat toast or jam. Right, just in theory though. What jam would you use? I suppose, but if I, I did, not. it would be it would be a lucky jam though. I'll tell you that's, that much. Yeah. Amazing. All right, will Doug go into detail of what his strategy was for the match, what worked, what didn't work, when the match is completed? I've been thinking about this, what I'm going to do with <clears throat> with the content after this, because I'm obviously going to have, I don't even know how many hours of play, and I could do some kind of coaching or course, and I'm not totally sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to put something in the lab for sure. We'll do some kind of heads up something in the lab. I might do something more in depth on this challenge specifically as a standalone course. I'm not sure about that right now, but I'm definitely going to put at least some content with some hands that people can see. They're not available anywhere in the lab for our members and do a bit of heads up coaching in the lab. I, I know our, our members would love that. So I'm going to do some of that. Other than that, I'm, I haven't totally decided the plan yet. 
options. I'm weighing my options. In the next couple of weeks, I'll make a decision. <clears throat> Sounds good. Ryan, do you have any uh, questions by chance written down or anything? No, it was mainly those crazy hands, but he, he went over how lucky he got in all of them. So I think we got him covered. Cool, perfect. So I'll just, I'll dive into the last four we got. <laughs> all right, Doug, what is your experience level in golf? And would you be willing to play golf against Daniel for money? I have golfed for the first time in a very long time recently. And it was just driving range. So I'm nowhere even close to near being able to golf for money. Not even close. I haven't played a hole of golf in years. And when I did, I played a few times. So definitely not. But, you know, if I if I go out there and practice, I have to feel I'm, I'm hitting some balls. I'm not inherently against it. I'm, I'm a man who's willing to wager. And I have a feeling that when I when I hit it, it's going to get pretty lucky. So yeah, that's true. That's also something I have to factor in, right? You got to factor it in. <clears throat> Amazing. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are you doing now that you have effectively retired from poker? Now, now is maybe a little bit tricky. So say five months ago or five months in the future, what is sort of your game plan? Yeah. What do you do every day when you're, since you're not focusing sure. on poker anymore? So for a little bit, I can't get too into this, but basically I was considering or I was working rather with someone on potentially doing a, a TV show that would be based more about finance from, from more of a less of like this stock is so hot, ding, 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 but talk more about what's happening in the world and try and do some more in-depth stuff on how not to get owned or be a noob in situations and kind of what what's happening and add in some comedy. But ultimately, you know, I didn't end up going through, so... I can kind of put that to the side now and think about what I want to do. I also don't think it's going to be YouTube. YouTube's fun in small doses. I'm sure uh, I'm sure I'd love to once in a while get in there and hammer some scammers. That's just the best. Uh, those are some of my favorite moments in YouTube. Um, but it's not going to be grinding YouTube. It's not going to be playing poker. I really don't enjoy playing poker. So I don't know. I really don't know. I think my game plan is once I finish this, I'll do some coaching based around it at Upswing. And then after that, I'm going to I'm gonna figure things out. I'm going to focus on health for a bit. I've been doing some dieting and getting back on the health train this year, which has been good. Kind of let that fall to the side while I've been focusing on poker and stuff. It's, it's really hard to be at a calorie deficit while you're trying to learn and study a lot because you're just so burnt out all the time. But I'm doing a pretty good job lately, so I feel good about that. But I think probably focus on health and start to just maybe look at some other investing or business stuff and... Yeah, I just, just kind of go down those avenues and be be pretty flexible. I'm in a fortunate position to where I don't really have to work, and obviously I can kind of pursue my passions. And, and I really do enjoy playing Counter-Strike. Um, I'm going to play in this season, even though I'm not really able to practice, but maybe I'll take that more seriously again. I'm, I'm unsure. But yeah, just find hobbies I feel passionate about and then focus on business and investing. That'd be kind of my, my strat from here. Seems good. All right. Is there anything that you realized, <clears throat> let me start over, say that like a human. Is there anything you realized that you missed about poker during or when you started playing this match? Uh, making money has been nice. Making money directly, not making money in theory or long run or investing, but just showing up winning money. That's been good. Mm -hmm between the challenge and what I played outside. I've, I've won over a million, maybe one, whatever. Um, it's been nice. It's been nice to, to do something, feel good about doing it. Sorry, let me rephrase that. To do something where you feel good, to do something where you know you're really good at it is the sentence I'm looking for. And then that's that has a, a, it's rewarding in its own way, right? To just be one of the best at something. Even if I'm not the best heads up player anymore, I'm certainly not, but I am one of the best players and just to, to get to, to to be at that level in something that you do, there's there's pride in that and that I've enjoyed. I'd say that's been the best the best attribute. But yeah, I'm ready ready for retirement. Yeah, that makes sense. There is there really is nothing like winning in poker, like how direct like even having a job and getting paid a paycheck, it doesn't feel the same as stacking some guy, you know? It just feels but, so goddamn good. But one of the problems is now when I play, it's only work. When I play, I'm just working. I'm, I'm here to take the money and leave. 
And so when I when I have big losing sessions, it just it just it, it's extra shitty because I did a thing I didn't want to do all day that I dislike and lost 100k. That just that's a, that's a shitty feeling, you know. Course, this is yeah. your this is your reward, Doug, for those hours you put in. You know, really just getting in there for the grind. But eh, it's it's I can't complain. Yeah, for sure. How could you? All right. Regarding your recent tweet, <laughs> why do you want to leave Nevada down the line? Well, there's there's several different reasons. Um, the first is at some point I'll probably start a family. I don't think Vegas would be good for that. Um, not great schools. Not great schools, not great atmosphere. And then the other thing is I don't plan on gambling or enjoy gambling. And I'm not up in the middle of the night anymore. So I need 24 hours stuff. I just, I, I don't really see a reason to be here other than I do have some friends here. Uh, but I don't have a ton of friends here. And then I have plenty of friends in other cities as well. So... I think it's time. I think it's nice. time to, to, to go be a... Oh, I'm definitely never going to be a regular human, but, you know, closer. Trend, yeah, trending that way. It, it's tough to be as regular of a human as you can be when you're living in Vegas. It's exactly. Just, it doesn't gel quite, quite like it would elsewhere. All right, let's quickly check the chat, see if you guys have any questions that you've recently asked. People are bringing up uh, ups an upswing poker, uh, well, I guess just upswing gaming team coming. That already exists, guys. I don't know if you know. There's already a. We're in. We're we're one of the top hundred teams in America in Counter Strike. Probably right about a hundredth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the low end of that for sure. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Do you think it's risky to say you don't like poker anymore with regards to upswing? Yeah, you want to throw no. an answer up for that one? Yeah, sure. So you know, here's the thing. I I just try to be honest and direct. And I don't try and just make every dollar I can and posture and, and try and basically protect things to make more money or whatever. I'm just going to say how I feel. And uh, obviously Upswing is my company and we teach poker. But there is a difference between my poker coaching company teaching people how to play poker well and me personally enjoying poker. They're not the same thing. If you want to learn how to play poker, you should get in the lab. If you want to learn how to play No Limit Hold'em, it's the best place to learn No Limit Hold'em. But that doesn't mean that I love poker, you know? You can do these two things separately. So I've just always tried to have a really honest relationship with my fans and the people that follow me and, and what I do. And so even if it loses me some money, uh, it's truthful. And, and I, I don't want people to, I don't want to lead anyone on, you know? I want to, I want to say how I feel. Right. Yeah, that's definitely been your approach from the beginning. I think most people appreciate the genuineness. Um, I'll wrap it up on this question. We've asked you this before, but this guy really wants to hear it. I know a lot of people are interested in this topic. So can you say whatever you're willing to say regarding side bets on this challenge? I mean, I, I, I'm doubtful you're willing to disclose how much you have at risk to win how much, but if just speak to the side bets that you have on the challenge, if you, if you don't mind. There are side bets on the challenge. Boom. There you go. See, that's all you get, guys. That's why I didn't ask. That's why I wasn't going to ask. But you asked 40 and, times and, in the chat. And, and, frankly, and frankly, I'm very lucky there are. <laughs> <laughs> What's the chance of that, Mike? What were the chance of side bits on this challenge? So lucky. Pretty lucky. Just to give you a little bit more of a satisfying answer, those of you who want to know an answer to that challenge or to that question, d the one of the publicized side bets that Doug has is versus Phil Helmuth. It's Phil Helmuth's $25,000 to win Doug's $100,000. That was on Twitter, so it's public information, so I'm comfortable disclosing it. But yeah, by if Doug were to disclose how much he has in side bets, that would allow Daniel to, in theory, play better down the stretch when, there, it, when and if it's a little closer and there's only a few thousand hands to play. So simply yeah, put, by, that, by answering... That, Mike, and also it's none of your fucking business, chat, so... You can go with the mic answer if you'd like, but really, I'm just telling you, I'm not going to fucking tell you. <laughs> All very, right, very, well. very, very polite though, Mike. Very kind of you. You're too yeah, kind to these animals. Well, You're too kind. Uh, well, we have a bit of a good cop, bad cop routine going. We've kind of had that for several years, actually. Okay. Where I treat people somewhat decently, and then you tell them the truth. So that's sort of how we approach it. Nice. Reasonable. Nice. All right, well... I think it's time to put a cap on this very fiery interview today. Good stuff. If you're gonna watch, if you were gonna watch one session of the of the Doug vs. Daniel challenge, I would say today is the session to watch. 
probably watching both can, interviews. Can I, can, say, can I just say how lucky they got to watch this session? <laughs> they did. They did. In fact, it, it's unbelievable how lucky they got. If this was one of the only ones you watched. So lucky. Yeah. No kidding. You didn't even realize you in the chat were running hot, but you actually were. <laughs> yeah, you guys were lucky to be here. No doubt about that. All right, well, one quick plug before we go. The new PLO Launchpad course is coming out on Upswing in, uh, I believe, one week from today, on the 25th, next Monday. It's going to be a beginner-friendly Pot Limit Omaha course. If you've ever wanted to break into that complex four-card game, but you've kind of been too too intimidated by it, or maybe you've just dabbled in it, this is the course for you. It's a five-plus hour lifetime access course that will teach you how to become a winner at Pot Limit Omaha Fast. That's coming to Upswing next week on Monday. It's going to come for $99. If you join during launch week, you're going to get the PLO Matrix revolutionary Pot Limit Omaha preflop tool. You're going to get that for $1 for a month. So very good deal. Do not miss out on that. We're actually going to host uh, the, the coach of that uh, course after this challenge. So stick around on YouTube and we're going to go ahead and raid him. Say what's up to cookies for us. And uh, yeah, that's about it for us today, guys. The next session is going to be on Wednesday, uh, two days from today, same time, same place, 2.30 p.m. Pacific time, 22.30 GMT. <sighs> Gonna be here on twitch.tv slash upswingpoker or youtube.com slash Poker. Thank you very much to Ryan Poker with Risk Risk for joining us today. Check him out on Twitch and YouTube. Some great cash game content for free. And thank you very much for tuning in. We will see you on Wednesday. Peace.